talk a little bit about open doors. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, John sees in heaven an open door. And there's a voice, it's the voice of Christ that says, come up here. And he goes up into heaven and begins to witness things that are happening in heaven's throne room. It's part of the vision. A lot of people have uh, considered that this verse may be actually a picture of the rapture of the church. The church goes through the open door and, and all that may be true. I don't know. That's not the point I'm going to be making here. I'm going to be talking about how the veil is thinning, okay, and how there's doors that are opening and closing, being locked and unlocked in the spiritual dimension, right and left, in the end times. People, so one of the things Jesus has John write in the letter to the church at Philadelphia, he says that he is the one who has the key of David, who opens and no one shall shut, and shuts and no one opens. Okay, so Jesus has the, these keys of authority. Okay, the keys of David just represent uh, keys of authority, that he has the right to open things and close them. And one of the things he opens and closes is uh, heaven. <laughs> he not, well, and not only opens and closes heaven, but he has the authority to open and close the abyss. So, there is an angel that comes down from heaven that has the key to the bottomless pit, and he opens it, okay? This angel has been assigned. He doesn't do this of his own accord. He only does this by permission. Jesus is the one who has the keys that he opens and no man shuts. He shuts and no man opens. Later on, Satan is going to be thrown into the abyss and the door will be locked. And Satan will not be able to get out because what Jesus uh, closes, no man can open. And actually, nobody can open, not even Satan. In the book of Revelation, you see doors opening and closing all the time. So when we look at Thessalonians, Paul says to, to the church there, he says, you know what is restraining the Antichrist until he is revealed in his day. Well, um, I used to think it was the church because the Holy Spirit's in the church, and if the Holy Spirit leaves, there's no restraint on the Antichrist. Well, the Antichrist is not the Antichrist until he is indwelt by this being from the bottomless pit. And Revelation never calls him the Antichrist. He's the seventh king who suffers a head wound and is, like, resurrected. And everybody follows him because he was resurrected. And, and I believe that it's at the time that he recovers or is resurrected from this head wound that this entity, this Apollyon, enters into him. Whether it's immediately after he is released from the bottomless pit or, you know, sometime at a later date, uh, don't know, doesn't really say, but we know that that it's not until he is indwelt by Apollyon that he kills the two witnesses, okay? The beast that rises from the bottomless pit makes war on the two witnesses and kills them, okay? The beast that rises from the bottomless pit or from the abyss is the beast from the sea, okay? Now, think about it. The beast from the abyss, the abyss actually carries connotations of the depths of the ocean, the beast from the sea is the same picture, okay? The abyss and the sea is basically the same thing, all right? So this seventh king will become an eighth king, according to Revelation chapter 17, and he will be indwelt by Apollyon. But that cannot happen and will not happen until permission is granted and the key is given to an angel to unlock that place and let this guy out, okay? And Jesus said, He's the one with the keys of David, David, who opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. All right, so during this seven-year period, people are being uh, resurrected, okay? The two witnesses are resurrected, and then they're raptured into heaven. Heaven's open. They can go in. The man-child is, is caught up to God and to his throne. Obviously, there's a way, a door, a portal, something is open. He gets caught up, and he goes into heaven's throne room. The... Um, 144,000 and the rest of the people who hadn't taken the mark of the beast and worshiped the Lord before the wrath of God is poured out in the bowls, they're taken up into heaven. And what's interesting to me is that uh, in Revelation 15, after that last group of people is raptured into heaven before the wrath, it says that the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were ended. 
says no one could enter the temple. Well, who had been entering the temple? Well, all these groups of people, 144,000 people who hadn't taken the mark of the beast, the man-child, um, the also, people from every tribe, tongue, and nation in uh, Revelation chapter 7, uh, who suddenly appear before the throne with palm branches in their hands. These are the uh, martyrs who've come out of the Great Tribulation. Not the Great Tribulation for Israel, but the one for the church at the hands of Mystery Babylon. In the, the fifth seal, we know that they get their white robe, and that means they're resurrected. So heaven is open and people are, are going up and down, okay? And angels are coming down. Angels are coming to earth. Angels are blowing trumpets. The veil between heaven and earth is very, very thin. I just want to share a little bit about, um, this. it's a personal kind of story. Last month my mother passed away and I was with her when she died. And she was in the hospital and she'd been in a coma for a few days and I was spending the night there. So a lot of people have been there during the day, but I was just staying the night uh, in the room with her, you know, just to be with her. And uh, um, I'd come into the room, it was about 10.30 at night, I'd had dinner with my family and came back to the hospital and noticed that my mother's condition had changed and it looked to me like, you know, like things were worse. She was breathing dif different. And so I'm sitting in the bed and I thought, well, I'll just sit here and, um, you know, I'll surf the net or check my email or whatever. And while I was doing this, I mean, I was not thinking about spiritual things or the Lord or reading my Bible or I wasn't doing it. I was just surfing the net. Okay. <laughs> and all of a sudden there came a very strong impression in my spirit that there was a draft that at first it, you know, the thought came to my mind, angel wings. And I'm like, wow, what's, what's happening here? Something is happening. But the way I describe it is, is from a spiritual standpoint, it was like someone had opened the door and I was aware of a draft. Okay, I was aware there was a door open somewhere. And all of a sudden, I just shut my computer. I went over and sat by my mom. And I realized that, that she was getting really to the end. And that the room was full. It was full of visitors that had come through an open door that had been cracked somewhere and there was a little draft coming in. And uh, and about, oh, about an hour later, my mother passed away. And it was very peaceful. And the room, even though it was just me and mom, the room was full. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. There is, it's all very thin right now. And it's getting thinner. And the door will open. And Christ is going to open the door. Matthew, it says, he's at the gates. When we see the fig tree come into um, leafing out again, and the 70th anniversary of Israel's becoming a nation is just around the corner. He says he's at the gate. He's at the door. The time is really, really short. Um, there's another passage that I just happened to come across the other day. It's in Acts chapter 2. And uh, I was reading about, it's about the day of Pentecost. And by the way, Pentecost is going to be shortly around the time of Israel's anniversary. Okay, about six days afterward. And when the, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And this wasn't just a crack in the door so some angels could come through into the room. This was a full-fledged, full door opening, and there was a big draft from heaven, and it was the Holy Spirit who came and descended upon the 120 people who were in that place gathered together. And you know, I think it's possible that when the 144,000 are sealed, this will be after we're gone, that heaven's door will open like that and there will be another rush of a mighty wind, a huge draft, huge, huge, because it isn't 120, it's 144,000 or more that are going to be sealed and I believe that means they're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So anyway, that's just some of my thoughts about the, um, the open door in heaven. 
And uh, I hope you'll like this video, share it with someone you think will find it valuable, and I'll see you on another video. Have a blessed day.